June Haver, a talented actress, rose to fame in Hollywood by signing with 20th Century Fox. However, her time at the studio was far from pleasant. The actress, like many of her peers, found the environment toxic and longed for a way out. Tune in to discover what ultimately transpired between Haver and the studio and how she navigated through this challenging chapter of her career. June Haver, born June Stovner on June 10, 1926, in Rock Island, Illinois, was the only child of a vaudeville song and dance couple. Her parents had a significant influence on her life from the very beginning. Her father, a well-known comic, and her mother, who had retired from performing to raise June, both played a crucial role in shaping June's passion for the performing arts. Growing up in a family deeply rooted in the entertainment industry, June was exposed to the world of show business from a young age. She often accompanied her parents to their performances, where she developed a keen interest in singing and dancing. Her parents nurtured her talent and encouraged her to pursue a career in entertainment, leading June to take her first steps towards stardom. As June grew older, her passion for performing only intensified. She began taking dance lessons and participating in local talent shows, showcasing her natural ability and charm. Her parents' support, combined with her own determination and talent, set June on a path towards a successful career in Hollywood. June's early life experiences, filled with the glitz and glamour of vaudeville, provided her with a solid foundation in the performing arts. Her upbringing as the only child of a song and dance couple shaped her destiny, ultimately leading her to become the beloved actress known as June Haver. June Haver's career in the entertainment industry began at a very young age. By the time she was just five years old, she had already started appearing in short films produced by RKO Pictures along with her parents. Her natural talent and charisma on screen were evident even at this early age, setting the stage for a successful career in the industry. As Haver grew older, she took on the last name of her stepfather, Bert Haver, and would use it as her stage name. This name would become synonymous with classic films and captivating performances as Haver continued to hone her craft and establish herself as a talented actress. Despite facing many challenges and setbacks throughout her career, Haver remained committed to her passion for acting and continued to work in the industry for many years. Her dedication and hard work paid off as she became known for her memorable performances in a variety of film and television productions. Today, Haver's legacy continues to live on through her classic films and captivating performances. Her contributions to the entertainment industry will always be remembered and celebrated by fans and industry professionals alike. The actress's work continues to inspire and entertain new generations, solidifying her place as a true icon in the world of classic Hollywood. After the family relocated to Ohio, the young June Haver, then just seven years old, entered and won a contest held by the prestigious Cincinnati Conservatory of Music. This early recognition of her talent marked the start of a promising career in entertainment. At the age of 10, Haver returned to Rock Island, where she started performing for none other than Rudy Valley, a popular singer and band leader of the time. Her natural charm and undeniable skill quickly caught the attention of audiences, setting the stage for her future success. By the tender age of 13, the actress had already made her film debut in the 1933 comedy Meet the Baron, which was followed by appearances in two more movies that same year. These opportunities allowed her to hone her craft and establish herself as a rising star, even before reaching adulthood. In the early years of her career, June Haver was scouted by RKO Radio Pictures and offered a contract during the height of the Great Depression. This marked a significant turning point in the life of the young girl who had started out as a child model an actress under the stage name Baby June. At just 14 years old, Haver began appearing in various productions for RTO, gaining recognition for her roles in movies like Tom Brown of Culver, a drama centered around military academy life. Additionally, she became a familiar face to audiences through appearances in the beloved Our Gang comedy series. Despite being relatively unknown today, these early experiences set the foundation for what would become a promising acting career. Through hard work, and dedication, Haver honed her craft and eventually established herself as a talented performer capable of holding her own against some of Hollywood's biggest stars. After starting her career as a child actress, June Haver then worked as a soloist on radio and became a regular performer on Rudy Valley's variety show The Fleischmann's Yeast Hour. This exposure led to her becoming a band vocalist with Ben Pollock during the same period. At the young age of 15, Haver secured her first starring role in the 1935 musical comedy, Romeo and Juliet. 
where she shared the screen with none other than Fred Astaire. In this film, she delivered a standout performance that earned her rave reviews from critics. Despite being so young, Haver held her own against one of Hollywood's most iconic leading men, demonstrating her natural talent and charisma. Haver's work on the radio and as a band vocalist had already established her as a promising entertainer. However, it was her performance alongside Astaire that truly cemented her status as a rising star in Hollywood. From this point forward, Haver would continue to captivate audiences with her talents both on stage and on screen. In 1936, June Haver found herself in a follow-up musical alongside none other than Fred Astaire himself, titled Follow the Fleet. This cinematic venture proved to be a significant milestone for the actress, garnering immense popularity and financial success. To be precise, it generated a profit exceeding $1 million during its first run in theaters. The overwhelmingly positive reception to follow the fleet solidified Haver's standing in Hollywood. Consequently, she penned a fresh agreement with Urkio Radio Pictures, further cementing her position in Tinseltown. With each passing role, Haver continued to make her mark, turning heads and leaving audiences eager for more of her enchanting performances. Her journey had just begun promising a series of captivating roles that would continue to enthrall viewers for years to come. As this classic tale unfolded, Haver became an essential figure in the ever-evolving landscape of cinema. June Haver, the actress known for her cameo appearances and work in Busby Berkeley musicals, made a name for herself in several films throughout her career. In the big broadcast of 1937, Haver made a brief appearance showcasing her talent and charm. She also graced the screens of The Singing Marine, and Alexander's ragtime band, leaving a lasting impression in each role. In addition to her camos, Haver was also a prominent figure in Busby Berkeley musicals. She worked on stage extra work and Broadway Melody of 1938, where she dazzled audiences with her singing and dancing skills. College Swing and Babes in Arms were two other Berkeley musicals that featured Haver, showcasing her versatility as an actress and performer. Haver's work in these films and musicals helped to establish her as a talented and captivating presence in Hollywood. Her contributions to the world of classic film continue to be celebrated and appreciated by audiences today. June Haver, an actress known for her work with 20th Century Fox, finally got her big break when she signed with the studio. In her first film with the company, Little Miss Smiles, Haver played a young orphan who brings joy to those around her. The film was a success and it helped establish Haver as a talented actress. Following Little Miss Smiles, Haver went on to star in a number of other films for 20th Century Fox. In Every Day's a Holiday, she played a department store model who falls in love with a reporter. The film was a romantic comedy, and Haver's performance was well received. Haver also appeared in The Lone Wolf Spy Hunt, a mystery film in which she played a nightclub singer who becomes embroiled in a spy plot. The film was a change of pace for Haver, and it showcased her versatility as an actress. One of Haver's most memorable roles was in Lillian Russell, a biographical film about the famous singer and actress. Haver played Russell in her early years, and she gave a standout performance. The film was a critical and commercial success, and it helped solidify Haver's status as a leading lady. Throughout her career, Haver was known for her beauty, talent, and charm. She was a popular actress, and she made a significant impact on the film industry. Today, her films are still enjoyed by audiences, and they serve as a reminder of her talent and legacy. June Haver, the actress known for her lively performances, also showcased her talents at various charity events. One such occasion was a benefit organized by Orson Welles on March 10, 1938, held at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. This event was specifically arranged to raise funds for the Hollywood Anti-Nazi League, supporting Spanish loyalists in their fight against Franco's fascists during the Spanish Civil War. The benefit organized by Wells proved to be a resounding success, managing to raise an impressive sum of 45000 This substantial amount was raised through the collective efforts of numerous artists and celebrities who participated in the event, including Haver. Her involvement, along with that of her peers, played a crucial role in amassing such a significant contribution to the cause. Haver's performance at the function was undoubtedly a reflection of her unwavering commitment to social issues. The actress's participation in charity performances, such as Wells' Benefit, highlights her dedication to using her talents for the greater good. Her involvement in these events served not only to entertain attendees, but also to contribute to raising awareness and funds for critical social and political issues of the time. 
In summary, June Haver's charitable performances, including her participation in Orson Welles' benefit, demonstrate her deep-rooted dedication to making a difference. The actress's involvement in these events, which raised substantial funds for the Hollywood Anti-Nazi League, underlines her unwavering commitment to supporting important causes throughout her career. In 1943, the actress June Haver made her debut for 20th Century Fox in the wartime morale booster, Thousands Cheer. This picture featured a myriad of stars, including many popular celebrities of the era. Following this, Haver starred in yet another all-star extravaganza, The Gang's All Here. However, despite their impressive cast, these films didn't live up to expectations at the box office. Surprisingly, they weren't even classified as musicals, although music played a significant role in both productions. Thousands Cheer follows various stories set against the backdrop of a traveling USO show during World War II. Meanwhile, the gang's all here takes viewers on a lively journey filled with music, dance routines, and colorful sets. Unfortunately, audiences didn't embrace either film wholeheartedly, leading to below average earnings. These outcomes might have been different if the movies had been promoted as musicals, considering how much the genre appealed to moviegoers during that time. Nevertheless, June Haver continued to shine through challenging circumstances, delivering memorable performances in both pictures. In the early years of June Haver's acting career, she began making a name for herself in Hollywood. However, it was her fourth picture, Janie Gets Married, that truly propelled her into the limelight. This delightful comedy saw Haver sharing the screen with popular actors Mac Murray and Hedy Lamarr. Her charming performance captured audiences' hearts and solidified her status as a rising star. Following the success of Janie Gets Married, Haver continued to make waves in the industry with her next major project, Hollywood Canteen. This all-star extravaganza featured an impressive ensemble cast, including the likes of Bing Crosby, John Garfield, and Betty Davis. With its engaging storyline and exceptional performances, the film became yet another feather in Haver's cap further cementing her position as a sought-after talent in Hollywood. The actress's meteoric rise to fame can be attributed to these two defining roles, which allowed her to shine alongside some of the biggest names in the business. Through her work in these films, Haver demonstrated her versatility, charisma, and undeniable star power, captivating audiences, and earning critical acclaim along the way. As her fan base grew, so too did the opportunities presented to her, paving the way for a successful, and fulfilling career in the entertainment industry. In the early 1940s, a young actress by the name of June Haver graced the silver screen in a series of musicals that left both critics and audiences in awe. One of her earliest roles was in Moon Over Miami, a delightful comedy that showcased her talent for singing and dancing. The film was a hit, and it wasn't long before Haver became a household name. Following the success of Moon Over Miami, Haver went on to appear in Tulsa a musical comedy that explored the lives of oil rig workers in the American Southwest. The film was praised for its engaging storyline and Haver's charming performance. In Springtime in the Rockies, Haver starred alongside famous actor and singer Betty Grable. The two played a pair of singers who find themselves in a love triangle with a charming pilot. The film was a critical and commercial success, and it further solidified Haver's status as a rising star in Hollywood. The comedies that Haver appeared in during this time were well received by audiences and critics alike. They offered a welcome escape from the harsh realities of the war and provided a much needed dose of laughter and entertainment. With her infectious energy and undeniable talent, Haver quickly became a fan favorite and it wasn't long before she was one of the most sought after actresses in Hollywood. As Haver's star continued to rise, she went on to appear in a number of other successful films, including the daughter of Rosie O'Grady, and I wonder who's kissing her now. Through her work in these films, and others, Haver left an indelible mark on the world of musical comedies, and cemented her place in film history as a talented and beloved actress. In the 1940s and 50s, the Hollywood studio system gained notoriety for its treatment of contract players, particularly actresses like June Haver. These women often faced challenges in receiving fair billing, adequate screen time, and desirable roles. Despite being a promising talent, the actress found herself entangled in these issues during her tenure at Fox. The press frequently labeled June Haver as one of the many Fox girls, a term used to describe the stable of attractive young female actors under contract with the studio. This classification placed her in a category of performers who were primarily valued for their looks rather than their acting abilities. Consequently, she received limited opportunities to demonstrate her range and potential. 
One example of this inequity could be seen in the promotional materials for her films. Although June Haver appeared alongside established male stars, she rarely received top billing. Instead, the studio favored promoting her co-stars over her, further solidifying the perception that she was merely eye candy. Moreover, the actress struggled to secure substantial parts in major productions. She often found herself consigned to supporting roles or light-hearted musical numbers, which hindered her ability to grow as a serious dramatic artist. As a result, her talents remained largely untapped, overshadowed by the demands of the studio system and its rigid hierarchy. Despite these obstacles, June Haver persevered, eventually earning recognition for her work outside of the Fox machine. Her later career demonstrated her resilience and determination to overcome the limitations imposed upon her during her early years in Hollywood. June Haver, like many actresses of her time, faced significant challenges in the film industry. After starting her career as a child actress, she eventually found herself working for studios other than Fox. This change came about after she was dismissed by her previous studio, not an uncommon fate for those who were deemed difficult to work with. The actress, like so many of her peers, was often asked to do degrading things in the name of art. For instance, she was once required to stand fully clothed on shore while waves crashed over her. This was just one of the many indignities that women in the industry had to endure. With limited options available to her, Haver, like many other actresses, had to put up with such demands. The studios held a significant amount of power, and those who dared to challenge them often found themselves out of a job. Despite these challenges, Haver persevered and continued to work in the industry. She appeared in a number of films and shows, leaving her mark on this classic era of Hollywood. In the end, the actress's story is a testament to the struggles that many women in the film industry faced during this time. Despite the challenges, they continue to work and contribute to this beloved art form, leaving behind a legacy that is still celebrated today. June Haver, a talented actress, had a unique career trajectory in Hollywood. Unlike some of her contemporaries who faced criticism for getting pregnant out of wedlock or arguing with their bosses, Haver's challenges were of a different nature. She had a disagreement with 20th Century Fox, the studio she was associated with, regarding the way they utilized her talent. During her time at Fox, Haver was often cast in light-hearted musical roles, which she excelled in. However, she yearned for more diverse and challenging roles to showcase her versatility as an actress. This led to a disagreement with the studio, as they were hesitant to deviate from the successful formula they had established for her. Despite this hurdle, Haver remained committed to her craft and continued to deliver impressive performances. Her talent and dedication eventually earned her the respect and admiration of both her peers and audiences. In the end, Haver's career serves as a reminder that even in the face of challenges and disagreements, perseverance and determination can lead to success and recognition. Her story is a testament to the fact that actors and actresses, like all artists, have unique visions and aspirations, and that their growth and development should be nurtured and supported. June Haver, an actress who graced the silver screen in the 1940s, found herself feeling mistreated after six years in the industry. She had appeared in several films, including The Great Profile in 1940, where she shared the screen with the legendary W.C. Fields. In The Great Profile, Haver played a supporting role, but her performance was still noteworthy. The film was a comedy drama that revolved around the life of a fictionalized version of actor and playwright Barrymore. The following year, Haver appeared in John Ford's Western film Drums Along the Mohawk. The movie was set during the American Revolutionary War and told the story of a frontier settlement in New York. Haver played the role of a young woman who marries a farmer and moves to the settlement. Despite her success in these films, Haver felt mistreated at the studio and decided to leave after six years. Her decision to leave was not an easy one, but she stood her ground and moved on to other opportunities. Haver's roles in The Great Profile and Drums Along the Mohawk showcased her talent and versatility as an actress. Even though she faced challenges in her career, she remained committed to her craft and continued to act in various films and shows. June Haver, an actress who gained fame in the 1940s, is best known for her role in the film adaptation of Bright Eyes in 1942. In this classic, she played the part of Shirley Temple's best friend, Susan Peters, which led to her being nicknamed the other Shirley Temple. This role propelled Haver into the spotlight and solidified her place in Hollywood. Later, in 1950, Haver's career took another exciting turn when she was signed to RCA Records. This opportunity allowed her to showcase her talents in a different way and reach an even wider audience. 
Her work with RCA Records was just one more example of her versatility and dedication to her craft. Throughout her career, Ava proved herself to be a talented and dedicated actress. From her early role as Shirley Temple's best friend to her work with RCA Records, she left an indelible mark on the film industry. Her contributions continue to be cherished by fans of this classic era of Hollywood. After gaining popularity in films like The Daughter of Rosie O'Grady, and with a song in my heart, June Haver experienced even more success in the mid-1950s, with several chart-topping hits. Her first hit, Baby Doll, became an instant favorite among fans and critics alike. This catchy tune highlighted Haver's vocal abilities and solidified her status as a talented singer. Following its release, Haver released two more songs, Yes Sir, That's My Baby, and I Love You So Much It Hurts. Both tunes quickly climbed up the music charts, earning Haver numerous accolades and further cementing her position as a popular musician. Despite receiving offers for various television roles during this time, Haver chose to decline them all. Instead, she decided to focus solely on her burgeoning singing career. With each passing day, Haver found herself becoming increasingly passionate about music and saw it as an opportunity to explore new creative avenues beyond acting. As a result, she spent most of her time recording songs and performing live shows across the country. Although she would occasionally appear in movies, Haver's primary focus remained on her singing career throughout the remainder of the decade. In the early stages of June Haver's career, one particular performance left a lasting impression on audiences, Heartbreak Hotel. This unforgettable piece made its debut on the actress's NBC television show before being recorded and subsequently released as a single. The impact of Heartbreak Hotel was immense, earning the status of a million seller after selling more than one million copies. As a result, it received a prestigious Gold Disc Award from the Recording Industry Association of America in August 1956. Undeniably, Heartbreak Hotel stands out among the actress's earlier works, demonstrating her ability to captivate listeners and viewers alike with her talent. Without a doubt, this classic remains etched in people's memories even today. Moving forward, let us delve deeper into other aspects of this talented artist's life and work. June Haver made a significant impact in the music industry during the 1960s. She was one of the few country music singers who successfully crossed over into pop music alongside other notable artists like Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash. This crossover was a rare achievement and demonstrated Haver's versatility and appeal to a wider audience. Haver's popularity soared during this period, with several hits that became instant classics. Among them were The End of the World, It's All in the Game, and Don't Send Me Roses. These songs showcased Haver's emotive singing style and ability to connect with listeners on a deep level. They resonated with many people and became anthems of their time. The End of the World was a particularly poignant song that struck a chord with audiences. Its haunting melody and introspective lyrics captured the zeitgeist of the era and made it a favorite among fans. Similarly, It's All in the Game and Don't Send Me Roses became enduring classics that showcased Haver's range and versatility as a singer. Throughout the 1960s, Haver's popularity continued to grow, and she became a household name. Her contributions to pop music were significant, and she left an indelible mark on the industry. Her ability to cross over from country to pop music was a testament to her talent and appeal, and it paved the way for future artists to do the same. Today, Haver's music continues to be cherished by fans of all ages. Her classic hits remain popular, and her legacy lives on through her contributions to the world of music. Her ability to connect with audiences and create memorable, emotive songs has made her a beloved figure in the industry, and her impact is still felt to this day. June Haver, an accomplished actress, found love during the filming of Lillian Russell. It was there she met her future husband, Fred McMurray. Interestingly, working with McMurray didn't hinder her career, but allowed her to spend more time at home. Even after their marriage, Haver remained active in both television and films. Her dedication to her craft and commitment to her personal life are a testament to her balancing skills. In 1953, the actress June Haver shared the screen with George Reeves in the film No Place Like Homicide. This classic mystery follows the story of a private detective who falls in love with his client while trying to solve her husband's murder case. Haver plays the female lead, bringing charm and elegance to her character. Following her successful performance in No Place Like Homicide, Haver took a break from films and ventured into television. In 1956, she became a part of the beloved sitcom The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, 
playing a supporting role, she contributed to the show's warm humor and family values. Later, in 1957, Haver made her return to the big screen in the drama The McConnell Story. The movie tells the true tale of Air Force test pilot Robert McConnell and his wife Mabel, portrayed by Haver. She delivers a heartfelt performance as the supportive spouse navigating through their life together amidst challenges and triumphs. Throughout her career, June Haver demonstrated versatility and talent in both film and television roles, solidifying her place as a respected figure in Hollywood during its golden age. June Haver, the actress cast as the wife of James Whitmore in the film, found herself in a unique situation during the production of Babysits. Whitmore portrayed a real-life baseball player who tragically died from head injuries sustained during a game. As fate would have it, Haver became pregnant with her first child during filming. The joyous news of her pregnancy added an extra layer of emotion to her portrayal of a supportive spouse. The film's themes of resilience and loss now intertwined with the real-life joy and anticipation of new life. As the filming progressed, Haver continued to balance her professional commitments with the physical and emotional changes brought about by her pregnancy. Her dedication to her craft was unwavering, even as she prepared for the life-changing event of motherhood. On May 30, 1955, Haver gave birth to fraternal twin sons. The arrival of her sons marked a new chapter in her life, one filled with love, nurturing, and the challenges and rewards of raising two children at once. The actress's experience during the filming of Babysits and the subsequent birth of her twin sons is a testament to the complexities of life and the interplay between personal experiences and professional commitments. Her story serves as a reminder that even in the midst of tragedy and hardship, life finds a way to flourish and bring joy. June Haver, the actress known for her roles in classic films, faced challenges in her personal life, particularly when it came to her family. She had two sons with her husband, Fred McMurray, Christopher Paul, named after her brother, and Peter Gray, after McMurray's brother. Later, they would welcome a third child, Patrick Ryan, who was born on November 27, 1958. Haver was known to have a fiery temper, which she found difficult to control. However, she was determined to learn how to manage her anger, especially for the sake of her children. Despite the challenges she faced, Haver remained committed to her family and worked tirelessly to maintain a loving and stable home environment. The actress's ability to confront her temper and work towards a solution speaks volumes about her character and resilience. Her dedication to her family, even in the face of adversity, is a testament to her strength and determination. Through it all, Haver remained focused on providing the best possible life for her children, ensuring that they were well cared for and loved. June Haver, the actress known for her lively performances, began to transition to fewer roles as her children grew older. In 1959, she took on a supporting role in the film The Miracle, where she portrayed a secretary. During this time, Haver faced a challenging situation in her personal life. Her husband struggled with alcoholism, a battle that led the actress to a profound realization about herself. In her efforts to help him, Haver discovered that she too was afflicted with the same addiction. This shared struggle brought about a new understanding in their relationship and a determination to overcome the challenge together. The actress's journey serves as a reminder that addiction can affect anyone, regardless of their public image or success. Her story highlights the importance of seeking help and addressing addiction as a shared issue, rather than an individual one. June Haver, the actress known for her roles in films like The Dolly Sisters and Irene, had a personal struggle that led her to make a significant change in her life. She entered a sanitarium for treatment with her husband, actor Fred McMurray, by her side. This experience was a pivotal moment for Haver, as it inspired her to quit drinking forever. The sanitarium provided Haver with the support and care she needed to overcome her struggle with alcohol. The treatment she received had a profound impact on her, and she emerged from the experience with a new outlook on life. She realized that she no longer needed alcohol to cope with the pressures of Hollywood, and that she could find happiness and fulfillment in other ways. In an interview after her treatment, Haver shared her new perspective on life. She said, I'd rather have a piece of chocolate cake than drink any day. This statement perfectly encapsulates the shift that occurred in Haver's mindset. She no longer saw alcohol as a source of pleasure or comfort, but rather as a hindrance to her overall well-being. After quitting drinking, Haver became a strong advocate for sobriety and often spoke about the benefits of living a substance-free life. She encouraged others in the entertainment industry to seek help if they were struggling with addiction and offered her support to those who were trying to quit. 
Haver's decision to quit drinking was a brave and commendable one. It not only improved her own life, but also inspired others to make positive changes in their lives as well. Her story serves as a reminder that it's never too late to seek help and make a change for the better. June Haver, the beloved actress, reached the final chapter in her illustrious career with a couple of notable films that continue to intrigue fans of classic cinema. Following a memorable collaboration with the ever-popular Fred McMurray and the Shaggy Dog, this heartwarming comedy, which also featured her talented daughter, formed a poignant family moment on the silver screen. It seemed like a delightful choice for Haver, but unfortunately, her last hurrah with McMurray wouldn't bring the box office success she had hoped for. A year later, June Haver ventured into an altogether different realm with the horse, without a head, a film that paired her with the ever-creepy Vincent Price. Despite her undeniable performance skills, the project unfortunately fell short of expectations, struggling at the box office. This movie, a gripping but doomed tale, marked a turning point in her career, revealing the unpredictability of audience tastes and the sometimes snias nature of the movie business. While the shaggy dog stands as a testament to Haver's comedic prowess and the cherished memories it bestowed upon her fans, the horse without a head served as a reminder of the unpredictable nature of box office hits. June Haver's final film showcased her undeniable talent and dedication, transcending the whims of commercial success to leave a lasting impression on those who were fortunate enough to witness her work. Today, viewers still discuss these classics and pay homage to the actress who dared to step in a world where not every venture guarantees the same level of admiration. In the late 1950s, after years of success in Hollywood, the actress June Haver made her final screen appearance in the war drama Operation Eekman. This movie marked a departure from her earlier roles, which often featured her singing and dancing skills. Operation Eekman, released in 1957, tells the story of Allied forces during World War II who attempt to rescue trapped soldiers behind enemy lines. Directed by Louis Seiler, the film boasts an ensemble cast including Haver, William Lundigan, and Richard Boone. Haver plays the role of Mary Jones, a dedicated nurse who volunteers to join the dangerous mission. Her character displays courage and selflessness throughout the film, providing a strong contrast to some of her more light-hearted performances in previous films like The Daughter of Rosie O'Grady and Irene. Despite being one of MGM's most promising stars during the 1940s and early 1950s, Haver decided to retire from acting shortly after completing work on Operation Eekman. She had already married actor Fred McMurray in 1954 and chose to focus on raising their four children instead. Although she left the limelight early, June Haver left an indelible mark on classical Hollywood cinema through her diverse range of roles and undeniable talent. Even today, fans continue to appreciate her contributions to this golden era of American filmmaking.